Welcome to Electronic Simplified. So we are going to learn how to make an asynchronous web server using the ESP32. So without wasting any more time, let's gather the things we need. So we are going to need the ESP32. You can use any version and later make some changes in the code. Light emitting diodes or LEDs grab two or more for this experiment we'll need 220 ohm resistors to protect the leds and to mount the circuit the breadboard so to get the complete connections done some jumper cables and then of course without any mentions we need the data cable or the micro usb cable for the connections now ensure that this Cable can transmit and receive data. Do not use any power cables and then say your program is not uploading. Now let's go to the circuit diagram. The circuit diagram is available in the description. You can pause the video here and do the circuit connections. Or else you can follow the con connections along with me. So I'm following a rule. I'm taking the positive terminal and keeping it on my right hand side. So keep the GPI open to 12 or just connect it onto the ESP32 and I'm going to connect it to my positive terminal of the LED. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the next LED. GPI open 13 to the positive terminal of my yellow LED. So I've connected 12, 13, 14 on my ESP in the beginning. And that's my last LED. You can connect more than that. Okay, so I'm just ensuring that the positive terminal is on the right hand side. So all my positive terminals are connected. Now it's time for the negative terminals of my LEDs. Now the negative terminals have to be connected to the ground to the ESP32. So before that, I'm going to connect all the negative terminals to the negative array on the breadboard now these resistors are solely they only serve one purpose is to protect the led from excess current so that's the only reason why you use them there is no other you know purpose over here so make sure you connect all the leds i mean all the resistors to protect our LEDs. So once these uh, resistors are connected, now all you need to do is connect the ground from the breadboard to the ESP32. Now take a jumper cable and connect the ground to the negative terminal of the breadboard or the negative array of the breadboard. So our connections are complete and let's go to the code. Now for any code related or how to do the setup, there is another video you can follow that. Now for this code, for this activity or this project is available in the description. Now what changes we need to do? You need to just change your SSID or that is your Wi-Fi name and the password. I'm not going to censor it here because I know that not many will be able to connect to this Wi-Fi at all. All right. So for the first time, when you try to upload this code, I'm just going to tell you a small tip. Use the same code that I've provided you. And later, you can make the changes after you have understood the code. So I'm going to change the GPI or pin numbers as per my requirement. And also over here, if you can check in the word setup, I have changed my pin numbers to 12, 13, 14. My code looks fine. I'm going to upload my code now. So the upload settings are also available in my other videos. Okay, so make sure you watch the other videos that I'll be putting down in the description. Now the uploading might take a while. So some of you might have uploading failures here. So there is another video in the description how to fix these errors. So you can refer to that. Now it's time to reset the ESP32. 
after the uploading is done reset your esp32 it's not necessary for all the esp32s but i advise you to reset it now find the ip address that is provided in the uh, in the serial monitor and there you go you can control the web server leds so make sure you subscribe to my channel and to stay updated you can follow us on social media as well thank you for watching